I'm expecting two gentlemen. Yeah, well, what makes you expect them here? My name is J.M. Thornton. Oh. Who is it? J.M. Hello, Curly. Hi. Hello, Tony. Everything fixed? I'm sorry, Tony. You carried the picture to the well once too often. That last venture of yours was a bit overdone. So the aroma's a little, uh... To put it mildly, the newspapers are raising the roof off of the town, demanding your arrest. Tony, you're too hot to handle. Too hot to handle? If I had some more of this sunburn lotion, everything would be okay, huh? We're going back, Curly. Don't be a fool. Tony, if you're convicted this time, it means life. He's right. Uh, yeah? Well, what do you suggest? Leave town. You can't stay here. If you're 100 miles to St. Louis, and you're sure to be recognized. Say, I know a nice little spot down in New Orleans. Well, New Orleans will be fine, but how are you going to get there? The ordinary means of transportation involve too many risks. Tony, you must understand how serious it is this time. They really got out the bloodhounds, huh? Always have to make this the last spot to put up a poster. Professor claims you have the worst rot gut from St. Louis, New Orleans. Order up, Professor. Thank you, Captain Jackson. Southern Comfort, Joe. Southern Comfort? Southern Comfort. Make it a double shot, Joe. It's got to last me until I get to New Orleans. Ought to be a good season this year, especially down New Orleans. New Orleans? You got any uh, new talent, Captain? The finest array of troopers that ever graced the stage of the Alabella. As a matter of fact, I have to keep them undercover. I'd lose them to Broadway. Right, Professor? Well, words fail me. Make mine the same. Good evening, gentlemen. I'm Captain Jackson of the Showboat Alabella. Here. Yeah. These tickets and 75 cents will gain you admission to the finest show this side of Broadway. Thank you, Captain. I didn't know there were any showboats left. The Alabella is the last of her type. But we make every stop up and down the Mississippi from St. Louis to New Orleans. New Orleans? Now, that's a remarkable coincidence. My physician, Dr. Thornton, informs me that the temperature in this part of the country is a little too warm for me. He uh, advises that I take a sea voyage. Could you accommodate two passengers as far as New Orleans? Gentlemen, it will be a pleasure to have you aboard the Alabella. We leave immediately after the show tonight. Oh, by the way, I may be able to do you some good. In a certain sense, I'm uh, quite familiar with the medical world. But uh, this is a very rare case, Bacillus fugitivus. Ipso facto. Do tell. Fine, we'll get our luggage from the hotel. Coming, doctor? Mrs. Jackson's gonna like this. They don't look... Nonsense, Professor. I could see they were perfect gentlemen the moment... The, the moment they flashed the bankroll, I know. Yes. No. Don't you dare tell Mrs. Jackson how much they paid me for fare. Are my boys filling up with water, Joe? Yeah, I let them have some empty barrels. They ought to be through now, though. Say, what do you do with all that water? That's a secret. Say, by the way, Captain, you don't happen to have another bottle of that medicine you gave me. It, it uh, sure helps my lumbago. Never to be found without it, Joe. That's good for any organic trouble I ever heard of. Tell you what I'll do, Joe. I'll trade you two bottles of Pepto Vintage water for one quart of that stuff you call bourbon. Well, make it three and it's a deal. I'm sorry, but the ingredients in those bottles are so expensive. Uh, hey, Professor? Well, personally, I wouldn't ask the Captain for a bottle if I were dying. Huh? I mean, the ingredients are so expensive. Well. Thanks, Captain. Oh, don't mention it. Always glad to relieve the suffering of my fellow man. Well, see you aboard. So long. Bye, Joe. Hiya, Joe. Sorry I was so late. It's okay. I thought there were only two barrels. Let's stop talking and move. Boy. You can only get me two barrels. Yeah, huh? that's all this time. 
Where do you want the stuff put? Put them in the other room. Hurry up, boys. Get that water in the tank. Sam? Sam, come here. Come around him. Yes, sir. What does that thing read? 10,000, Captain. You gotta get that water meter fixed. That thing throws me off all the time. When that thing says 10,000, it means we got about 108 gallons of water. Well, that ought to be enough. Sam, see the boys return them barrels. Yes, sir. Brothers, sisters, yes, sir. this ain't no time to be gay. Morse Brothers fixing to do some sermonizing on the dock. That man got fire in his eye. Ah, uh -uh, somebody sure is in the kitchen. Reminds me one night in New Orleans, fine brimstone all over the place. Sister, yes. let's all kneel down and pray. Repent, Brother Burton. Repent, Brother Burton. Repent, Brother Burton. And get yourself right with the Lord. When the promised land is entered, and when Gabriel blows the cord, you just be going the other way, for you ain't right with the Lord. Repent, Brother Burton. Repent, Brother Burton. Repent, Brother Burton. And get yourself right with the Lord. Darling, the next time you come on the stage before I finish my bout, I will drown you with this Pepto vintage water. But Yvette, darling, you know how you creak when you bend. Creak? Why, you old fossil, why don't you know that I was the toast of Paris? Burn toast. Why, I would not stand for this insult another second. Captain Jackson? I demand that Monsieur Dogs and his old fossil there, that they accept my apology. Huh? Well, I mean that they apologize. What do you mean, apologize? Well, she called my wife an old bag. She said fossil, dear. All right, so you're an old fossil. How dare you, Henry Dogs? Mm, ladies, gentlemen, please, let's not call each other names. No, let the audience do that. Oh, shut up, you. Now, 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 I'll pay you all just as soon as I get it. You bet. Get back to work. I've put your two passengers in cabin B. You can give me what they paid you now. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, slip my memory. There you are, $50. Is that all? Why, sugar puss. If you don't believe me, ask the professor. I certainly will. How much did he give you to lie? Madam, on my word as a gentleman, I didn't receive one cent of that $100. <laughs> Oh, yes, yes, the hair. Uh, I was saving that to buy Susan a new dress. Huh. Good evening, Mrs. Jackson. Good evening, Zelia. Good evening, Captain. May I have some more peppermint flavor on my lollipop? You bet you can, Azalea. Here you are, service with a smile. There you are. Thank you. Ah, to be young again. Who's there? Me. Who is me? Me, Isaiah. Why don't you say that in the first place? Come on in here. As I was saying, when he looked at me with them plush button eyes, I says to myself, Opal, this ain't no time to be foolish. But last week you told me that you married him. Of course I married him. Oh, my goodness. I wasn't going to let no good man get away from me. Well, good men's are scarce as... Oh, I... <laughs> Honey, you the image of your mom when she was queen of the Mississippi. <laughs> Thank you, Opal. Was she really beautiful? 
child when she stepped on the stage to sing, even the fish come up out of the Mississippi to stop looking and listen. <laughs> and your daddy, he was the handsomest man I ever did see. Why, it's getting late. We got to change for the show. Well, I think I'll wear this tonight. But honey, that's your mom's wedding gown. Yes, I know. Is there any reason why I shouldn't wear it? Well, the old folks say... Yes? They say you're bound to meet the man you love the same night. <laughs> Not in Clarksville. Why, Miss Cookie, you sure are pretty. Thank you, Xavier. <laughs> but it happened to your mom in a much smaller town. Well, good. We'll see if it works tonight. <laughs> there you are, Give me that thing. You want to spoil your appetite? I, uh, I must have frightened you. No, but... My name is Anthony Sardell. The captain was kind enough to permit me and my companion to go as far as New Orleans. I'm traveling for my health. Well, I'm Captain Jackson's niece. Ella Bella? No, that's my aunt. You see, the boat was named after her. You must be Susan. Yes, but how did you know my name? I saw it on the poster. And you're the only one aboard lovely enough to have such a beautiful name. <laughs> well, I really must be going now, Mr. Sardell. I hope the trip does you some good. I can't tell you how much better I feel already. Uh, and uh, the name is Anthony. Well, I'll try to remember. Looks like it's going to be a pleasant trip after all, eh, Tony? Anthony. This looks like the color. You always get the right color, all right. It just doesn't seem to taste the way it should. I wish we could find that formula. We've ransacked this ship from stem to stern. Hello, Skipper. Oh, Susan, you startled me. I thought I was seeing a ghost. Perhaps you'd better stop drinking Pepto Vintage water. Drink it. It's enough that I have to sell it. Oh, but I remember when Pepto Vintage water wasn't all water at one time. It was really a beneficial stimulant. It was widely used up and down the Mississippi. Yes, yes. And you can't find the formula? His father hid it someplace on the ship. He claimed it was worth a million dollars. We've been searching for it for the past 20 years. Drink that. Well? You know, I think if you can duplicate that in quantity, you'll have the base of a very good paint. Paint? Only a suggestion. Try that. You've been trying your experiments on him for all 20 years. <laughs> no wonder he looks like that. I'm inclined to resent that, but I'll overlook it this time. He's the only one that can remember how it used to taste. But think what it would mean to humanity if we could find that formula. And to us, we'd be rich. You could get that high-priced music teacher. And perhaps you could even realize your operatic ambitions. It does sound wonderful. But you're liable to embalm him. <laughs> or blow us all up. Now turn that thingamajig off. There's a crowd at the dock, and it's time for the show. They laughed at Lister. They ridiculed past your... And I take great pleasure in presenting to you as a sample of what you're going to see and hear on the inside of our theater, the star of our wonderful stage presentation, upon whom I am glad to bestow the title her mother made famous many years ago. Ladies and gentlemen, Susan, Queen of the Mississippi. Spank the muddy waters from St. Louis to New Orleans. At all a bale of cotton, your cares will be forgotten. Come up the gangplank and you'll see just what I mean. The Dixie Showboat is just a gable, and when you come aboard. Dixie Showboat is just a slow boat, and as you drift along, you'll find it's worth the fare. Down where the river bends, you'll find the rainbow ends, and the showboat will take you there. The 
Dixie Shuffle is just a slow-mo. And as you drift along, you'll find it's worth a fare. Down where the river bends, you'll find the world of men. I'm sorry I broke up your show. I didn't mean to. Well, why didn't you stop when I asked you to? And those Indians. It isn't their fault. They play only when I play the trumpet. Honestly, I was just listening to you sing and it came over me. Just like that. What came over you, just like that? My tickle. Your what? My tickle, the mood, the urge to play. And when I get it, I hear chimes. But I'm the only one that can hear them. I don't know what happened tonight. You see, when I get a tickle, I'm either in love or in jail. Well, you weren't in jail tonight. Are you in love? No. I guess your singing must have sent me. You did sing that song beautifully. That melody you were playing after I finished my song. I couldn't repeat it to save my life. You mean you don't know what you were playing? No. When I get a tickle, the music just comes out. And double or nothing are the same way. Double or nothing? <laughs> yes, the Indians. They adopted me two years ago. We've been together ever since. They are picturesque, and they look so comfortable. Oh, this is a pretty good jail. I'll bet the food isn't half bad. Food? I'm hungry. How long do you think they'll keep us here? Not more than 10 days. 10 days? Or $25, judging from past experiences. Well, what are you waiting for? Why don't you bail us out? Lady, I said $25 each. There are four of us here. That makes 100 of George Washington's etchings. And I have no etchings. Well, if you're broke, why don't you take a job? Any band would be glad to have you. Why, we could use you on the Alabella. It wouldn't work. If the tickle isn't there... It worked tonight. Will you please stop playing that trumpet? Oh, excuse me. Oh, here comes the rescue party. I let me do the talking. Susan, are you all right? Yes, Skipper, but I'm glad to see you. Well, what are you waiting for? Open it up. Here's her release. Skipper, I want you to meet the new addition to our show. Mr. Uh... Calhoun, Jeff Calhoun. How do you do? Fine, and you? Good. Susan, have you gone out of your mind? He practically ruined us. Well, that's because he was on the dock. Just imagine the crowd he could draw if he were playing on the boat. Susan's right. Young man, do you want a job on the showboat? Yes, ma'am. If you'll take the Indians, too. Indians? Huh. They don't look like much, but maybe they can be of some use. Them, too? Them, too. I'll pay the bail. M-E-R-C-I-B-I-E-N. Mersh Bean. Must be an Indian sign. Lieutenant, he says the Alabella won't sail unless he gets his dock beat. We haven't got the money. How much is it? One hundred dollars. For one night? One night each year for ten years. And I want my money in full or I'll call the police. Suppose we forget about the police. Here's your money. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Here. 
I'll see that you're repaid as soon as we get it, Mr. Sardell. Anthony. <laughs> Skipper, are you superstitious? No, not exactly. Although once I broke a mirror. And you had seven years bad luck? That would have been a picnic. I married your Aunt Bella. <laughs> but seriously, Skipper, do you think there's any truth in any of the things that Opal says? What did she tell you? Well, she said if I wore my mother's wedding dress, that I'd meet the man I love tonight. Which one is it, Jeff or Mr. Sardell? Well, Anthony, I mean, Mr. Sardell is a polished gentleman. And Jeff, well, he's nothing but a trumpet player. Well, what's wrong with a trumpet player? Especially if he's a good one. Then you think... I don't think. Your Aunt Elbella does that for me. <laughs> my, my. I'll never forget how beautiful your mother looked in that dress. Good afternoon, Mrs. Jackson. Oh. Afternoon. What's the matter with you? Seasick? Huh. What you need is exercise and bicarbonate of soda. Are you kidding? Hey, where have I seen that before? Hey, tell me. Anthony. All right, Anthony. Don't play that thing. It's all gaffed up. It'll never pay off. Sick. Oh, have you got the mal de mer? I got the seasickness, baby. Oh. oh, I know something that will fix him. What? You take a great big hunk of garlic, chip it up fine, then cover it with olive oil, add a little salt and pepper, and mix it in a great big glass of milk. Then hold your nose and drink it quick. <coughs> That's all, sister. Go home, will you? No, oh, but try it. It'll do you good. Oh, come on. Oh, uh, hello, Captain. Oh, say, Campbell, what's good for seasickness? Oh, river sickness? What you need is a bottle of my Pepto vintage water. That'll fix you up. Gentlemen, my compliments. Thanks, Cap. they do that? I couldn't get that thing open. That money's been accumulating for years. Oh. Oh, come on, Tony. Take me to my room, will yeah. you? Don't forget the garlic. Oh. A little bicarbonate of soda. Oh. Stick to my Pepto vintage water. Oh. And a glass of hot salt water. That's it. That'll fix him. Oh, brother. Oh, Tony, am I a sick monster? Oh, will you stop whining? Tony, I'm gonna die. Oh. If you don't shut up, I'll guarantee that for you. Uh, oh. May we come in? Oh, yes, please do. I thought we'd better come over. I heard he was ill. How is he? Mm. Poor fellow, he's really sick. Oh. Seasickness is only mental. <laughs> mental? Are you kidding? Oh. I'm sure if you were suffering as much, you'd think differently. I guess you're right. But I still say it's only in his mind. Well, mental or not, he is sick. And I think it's very kind of you to worry about him as you do. Oh. Thank you very much. Oh, perhaps we'd better go. Give you a chance to get him undressed and make him more comfortable. If you need anything, please call me. Thank you very much. Playing nursemaid to a guy who gets seasick on the river. Oh. Here, take some of this. I don't want any of this stuff. It's only a little water with peppermint flavoring. It'll help settle your stomach. All right. Hey, Tony. Now, don't start that again. Hey, this stuff isn't... Isn't what? The captain calls this Pepto vintage water, but I call it... Hey, being seasick must have affected your head. Hey, this is the McCoy. I feel wonderful. Mm -hmm. Here, taste that. Certainly smells like it. Tastes like it. Well, that must be 90 proof. 
But I don't understand it. We saw those hams bottling it from the faucet. But this may be the captain's private bottle. We'll make sure. If anyone comes in, you're still sick, remember? Okay, yep. Oh, uh, hello, Zaya. Hello. Uh, where is everybody? In the theater practicing. Uh, where's the captain? In the, in the bar room. Oh, well, that's just fine. Well, now, here's something for you. You run along. Thank you. You're welcome. If the rest of this stuff is anything like this, I'm going to be a healthy guy. Smells the same. Ah, it is the same. Oh, it's whiskey. And good. I can't understand it. I saw them bottling the stuff from that faucet there. And the faucet must be connected to the water tank. Let's have a look. Holy cow. You mean the whole boat's loaded with this stuff? And the captain's selling this for a buck a copy. He must be nuts. Or he doesn't know what he's got on board. Hey, there's the meter. See how much they got of this stuff. 10,000 gallons. Tony, we're rich. We don't own it yet. What do you mean we don't own it? Listen, we... Does it always have to be a rough hustle with you? Don't you know? I don't know nothing except that there's 10,000 gallons of bourbon on this scow. And Harry, I am... you remember Harry Lewis? He started to give me orders, oh, too. No, I didn't mean it like that, honestly. That's better. But you know, this is the greatest thing that ever happened to me since I got sprung in the state pen. Let's go down and see the captain. Oh, oh, it's for me. Oh, I wouldn't use that, Captain. Last time it almost caused a fire. Oh, nonsense, Professor. The true scientist disregards danger in his endeavor to find the truth. Can we do less? We? I'm just a guinea pig. I've been fed up drinking these concoctions. That's not the proper scientific spirit, Professor. You Someday you may be immortal. You're only immortal after you're dead. Well, the authorities have changed that. Now, all we have to do is to put this in that. Yeah. Last time that caused a fire. Oh, don't be silly. Watch. Well, I... I don't understand. When I conceived this theory in my dream last night, it... it worked perfectly. Well, you don't have to drink that one. Well, well let's get on with the next one. There. And there. And there. Well, let's see what we haven't tried. Oh, yes, water. Pepto vintage water, right out of the faucet. That's what we've been selling the customers. It's the only one we haven't tried in combination with the other things. Here, taste that. Well, at least it won't blow up. See, I think that's it. Quick, mix another. Tastes like it used to in the old days. I knew it. I knew it. There. There. And there. There, taste that. Captain Jackson, may I be the first to congratulate you on the rediscovery of Pepto Vintage water? Well, that's funny. I didn't use half the things I've been using. Well, we finally discovered a use for water. Yes, and there's plenty of it. Oh, never thought of looking for you down here, Captain. By the laboratory. Been doing much research? Not anymore. We finally. Well, no, I'm sorry, Mrs. Sardell, but we can't tell anyone about it just yet. Oh, of course. We really came down to talk a little business with you. Business? What business? We want to buy this tub. Buy this boat? Yes, I'd like to purchase the Alabella, and I'm prepared to offer a price, say, uh, $10,000 cash. But she isn't worth five. Why? Well, the trip so far has been very beneficial. I thought it would be nice to use the boat as a river yacht. I'm sorry, Mr. Sardell. Your offer is more than I can ask, but the Alabella is not for sale. Any reason, Captain? I don't care to disclose my reason. Well, then, I guess there'll be no sale. Well, there go our dreams of a pleasure yacht. Well, thank you just the same, Captain. I'll leave you to your experiments. Why didn't you sell it? 10,000, that's a lot of money. This is worth a million. He said cash. Hey, you know something? I think they make the stuff down there, but I didn't see any still. The whole layout is probably a cover-up for the real thing. <laughs> All right, Sam, you can get your supper now. I'll take over. Thanks, Miss Susan. Here you are, Pilot Jeff. 
You can steer away till your heart's content. Oh, uh, well, don't you think you'd better show me how it's done? <laughs> All right, but the Annabella's been up and down the Mississippi so many times, she practically knows the way. Put the trumpet down. Now, put your hands on the wheel next to mine. She may drift a little with the side currents. See them out there? Uh-huh. Now, all you need to do is turn the wheel slightly, and that compensates for the drift. And then that brings her right back again, back to normal. You understand? You turn the side currents slightly, and that compensates for the Arabella's drift. And the wheels... See, there are a lot of little wheels going around in my head. Love comes but seldom and strange as it seems. Love finds no welcome in hearts that won't dream. So you see, I must be a dreamer on a spree. I hold you in my arms tonight. If it's a dream, let's keep on dreaming. It's real. Don't break the spell. Heaven can be a dream or reality when you're in my arms. That's heaven. You, you trumpet player. I'm sorry, Susan. I was looking at you and it came over me again. Just like that, I suppose. Yeah. I don't know why I wasn't in jail. Susan, I'm in love. Well, if your trumpet can learn to cook, it should make an ideal marriage. But I'm in love with you, Susan. I'd throw this horn in the river if you wished. Why, Jeff, you can play your trumpet as much as you like. It's all right with me. But don't you think you ought to kiss me first? Wait, put the trumpet down and don't reach for it again, no matter how you feel. Oh, I won't. Sure? Positive. Juggle and eat. 
No, I didn't know that, but I know that you better juggle or you won't eat. Oh, I'm going home to Mother. Well, that's better than bringing the old battle axe on here. <laughs> Sad but true. Say, Henry, will you love me when my hair is gray? Well, I don't see why I shouldn't. I've loved you in three shades already. <laughs> I should have packed that axe on the mothballs 20 years ago and put them in a the museum. Ladies and gentlemen, I take great pleasure in presenting to you one of our feature attractions, brought to you at a great expense. Yvette singing No, No, No. Professor? No, no, no. This is as far as I go. Once in my mind said no, no. My heart thought you were the one. Oh, no, 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 no. I've been so dumb and so slow, thinking I was the old show. But you were just having some fun. I'll admit, I thought you were mine. I said so all over. That's all, brother. Now I see I everything. I Keep your opinions to yourself. Try to be a gentleman. But all I was getting was the old one around. It's yes, yes, yes. Baby, it's hard to confess that I still love your caress. My heart says, but I let me. I thought you were mine. I said so all over town. I thought I was getting someone divine, but all I was getting was the old one around. It's yes, 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 baby, it's hard to confess that I still love your caress. My heart says, oh, yes. But no, no, no. Gentlemen, before I present our next stellar attraction, I would like to introduce another star. Not of the stage, not of the radio, but rather a star in its own right. A star of the medical world. Ladies and gentlemen, Pepto Vintage Water. I know that many of you may have purchased Pepto Vintage Water in the past and said that it didn't do you any good. But, ladies and gentlemen, that is a thing of the past. For only tonight, after 20 years' research, can Pepto Vintage Water truly be called the modern miracle medicine. As a special introductory offer, I am going to give away this handy little corkscrew and potato peeler. With every bottle of Pepto Vintage Water. Now, who will be the first to buy this elixir of life? I will. Step right up on the stage. 
Now, my good woman, what ailed you? I'm sure the audience would like to hear. Well, lately I've been suffering from a sour stomach. I have spots in front of my eyes. Spots before her eyes. And sometimes I feel so weak, I can hardly speak above a whisper. Have you ever used Pepto vintage water before? It is the only thing that has ever helped me. Thank you, madam, for your unsolicited endorsement. There you are. And there's your handy little potato peeler and corkscrew. Thank you. Better than ever. <laughs> Who's next? I'll take one of them there. <clears throat> now, what's the matter with you? Bad cold. Settled all through here. There you are, my friend. And here's your handy little corkscrew and potato peeler. Thanks. I hate potatoes. <laughs> and now, who's next? Who will be the next to buy a bottle of this healer of all ills? Step right up, folks, and have your dollars ready. The boys will hand out the medicine. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And thank you. I can't oh, believe my eyes. Step right up, folks. He's really selling that stuff for a buck a copy. That still must be turning up with a barrel. Yeah, it is sort of peculiar. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And I thank you. There's something bigger behind all this. Uh, Tony, uh, I mean, Anthony, what are we waiting for? Every time he sells a bottle of this stuff, pop. Five bucks goes out the window. You. Haven't you saw that something yet? Yes, I have, Curly. Occasionally, a situation calls for drastic action. And this is one of them. Uh, no more with the politeness, Anthony? No more politeness, Tony. Thank you, folks. How's that? I could sing to that, but with the trumpet, it's got to be there. How's this? I'm sorry, Professor. It just won't work. But I appreciate your trying to help me. Oh, that's a shame. Your music's out of this world. It's too bad you can play only on inspiration. Maybe if you kept after it, you might be able to give without it. I wish I could. I'd take a steady job with some band and, well... Oh, Susan, eh? Yeah. Well, why don't you put your music down on paper? You could submit it to a publisher. That should award you handsomely. I can't. I don't know one note from another. Can't read music, eh? Unbelievable. Remarkable. Even annoying. Well. Well, I could do it for you. You would? But I don't know when I'll be in the mood again. Well, I can hear you play no matter where you are on the boat. Next time I hear you play, I'll set the music down on paper. Oh, that's awfully nice of you. Thanks. Oh, that's all right. Oh, hello, Professor. Susan? Uh, You are very talented, Monsieur Jeff. Thank you, Miss Yvette. Uh, your singing is... Divine? Well, divine is hardly the word for it. Oh, you say the nicest things, Jeff. But naturally, uh, you would uh, appreciate a fellow artist much more than those who do not know nothing of the finer points. Well, really, I... Oh, please, now, tell me, would you like to accompany me when I sing? Well, I, I don't... I, you know. Well, I understand very well how you feel. Uh, even though I am the star, you know, I'm willing to share equal billing with you. You know, Jeff, I like you. Oh, you do? Mais oui, certainement, je vous aime. Is that Frencher speaking? 
But oui. Don't you know that French is the language of love? Well, you'll have to excuse me, Miss Yvette. I don't speak French. They come at last. Miss Hellabella just paid me a week's salary. First one in three months. Gonna buy a red hat and gloves. Maybe a bag, too. There's a gentleman down in Evansville. <laughs> Opal, were any of your gentlemen friends musicians? Honey, that's a silly question. Musicians ain't gentlemen. That is them I come in contact with. That's why there's musicians. Oh, but Casper did play a trumpet. Mmm, that plenty solid, too. <laughs> a trumpet? Well, was he sort of, well, you know, fickle? Honey, all trumpet players is fickle. They seem to get something in their blood sort of like a Mr. Jive and Heckle combination. Make you love them one minute and hate them the next. Well, I just can't believe Mr. Calhoun is that way. He play a trumpet, don't he? Yes. Can you change the stripes on a wolf? I, I mean a tiger? Zania! Come out of here. What you doing dressed up like that? Who do you think you is? I is big stuff. You take this off and come on out of here. Oh, let her alone, Opal. She's cute. <laughs> All right, Miss Susan, if you want to mess with her. Tony. Nice to see you again. Say, this is a welcome surprise. Lately, I thought you'd been avoiding me. 
Oh, nonsense, Tony. You don't mind if I call you Tony, do you? It would be a pleasure, Susan. You know, you're the kind of a girl who could make a man change his mind about a lot of things. I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you were saying. Let's uh, go someplace where we can talk. Now that we're alone, Susan, I... You were saying? I'm sure we could be very happy together. You look rather blue, Jack. Oh, no, 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 Eve, that will cheer you up, yes? No? No, I don't want to be cheered up. Oh, no, 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 my little trumpet player, you mustn't be like that. Of course, your life with me would be very different. Oh, now, Jeff, I think I understand you. Now, all great musicians are temperamental. Tony, how thrilling. You're really proposing to me. Suzanne and Monsieur Sardet, they make a handsome couple, yes, no? No. Oh, Monsieur Fachi Anyone can see that they are suited for each other, yes? No. What do you say, Susan? But, Tony, I'm not in love with you. But anyway... He must be in love with her, otherwise he couldn't play. Who's in love with whom? He is. What's the matter, Monsieur Sardel? Doesn't she understand you? Yes? No? Yes. Uh, no. The long-eared owl is an industrious mouser and molests comparatively few birds. Several years ago, we examined 107 stomachs of this owl, of which 15 were empty. Can you imagine that? Of the 92 remaining, 86 or over 93 percent contained the remains of small mammals. Imagine that. Pencil, paper. Finest music in the world going up in thin air. No pencil, no paper. Oh, thank you. Oh, dear. Thank you. Gentlemen, I wish to present the stars of our show. Susan, the Queen of the Mississippi, and Jeffrey, the King of the Trumpet. <laughs> Jeff, you've got to play. We've advertised you in the customer's... I'm sorry, sorry, Captain Jackson, but I just can't seem to get into the mood. Is it Susan? Yeah, she won't speak to me. Susan, Jeff says he can't get into the mood. I was thinking... You're talking to the wrong girl. Get Yvette. Yvette? Nonsense, Susan. It's you. I won't even talk to him. Susan, we're playing New Orleans tomorrow. If we don't get him back in the mood tonight, he'll never... Susan, we'll lose our biggest play date. Spell. Heaven 
Well, don't stand there with your mouth open. Go after it. And him. now, ladies and gentlemen, before I present our next stellar attraction, I would like to introduce another star, not of the stage. The way you plan them, it can't miss. And show me there's about five G's cash in the captain's damper. What kind of a safe is it? If I sneeze hard enough, it'll fall apart. All right, we'll pick it up. But don't let that check and feed sidetrack you. The big thing is the boat. You got everything straight? Sure, it'll be a cinch. The first thing we do is we go ashore and phone New Orleans for a new dock reservation. Then we come back and take care of the characters. Then we get Sam to steer this barge into our dock space. Then we take care of Sam. <laughs> Nothing to it. Nice boyfriend you picked yourself. He's not my boyfriend, and they can't do this. It's piracy or mutiny or something. Whatever it is, they're going to do it. Let's get the others and... No, they're probably armed. I have it. When they go ashore to make their call, you go with them and stall for time. I'll follow and get the police. That way, no one on board will get hurt. All right, and I'll get your girlfriend to go with me. Girlfriend? Yes, Yvette. Oh, hello, Tony. Hello, Susan. Were you going ashore? Yes, we were just going to have a bite of food. We were, too. Well, then let's make it a foursome. Yes, no? Make up your mind. <laughs> you don't mind, do you, Tony? Why, on the contrary, it's an unexpected pleasure. I'm rather glad for this opportunity to get better acquainted before we part tomorrow night. Yes, it has been a lot of fun. You've quite recovered your health? Well, not entirely, but he'll be well real soon. Uh, Curly, I think you better telephone New Orleans and make our hotel reservation. Right. Excuse me. Don't be long, baby. I'll be lonesome. <laughs> Funny there's no police around. Well, we'll wait a few minutes more. If one doesn't show up, we'll break this window. Someone's bound to call for the police then. Looks like they're getting ready to leave. We can't wait any longer. Okay, boys. Let's break the window. Out of the way, bud. Huh? Hey, wait a minute. Oh, anarchists, huh? Put them bricks down. A policeman. Well, sure, I'm a policeman, and you're under arrest. Oh, you're arresting the wrong criminals. There are two. Oh, they're criminals, too, huh? All right, move along, slow. Thanks for a pleasant evening. Oh, must you leave so soon? Yes, we play in New Orleans, our biggest day tomorrow night, and we need the rest. Well, boys, uh, we'll see you later, huh? We'll see you later. Hello. 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 That's the jam. You like him, don't you? Well, of course I do. I told him so. And did he say... Oh, he's très charmant. He told me that my singing is divine. And then? And then? That's Jeff's trumpet. I wonder why he's playing. You're here and I'm not singing. Yvette, he's in jail. What, again? <laughs> Get me up at this time of the night. You can't arrest people just because they say things. You gotta have evidence. Evidence that'll stick. 
Turn that trumpet player and the Indians loose. But, Sarge, I... Anarchists, criminals. This is embarrassing, Sarge. I saw these... Now, look. Now, this... This is something. Yes, sir. Wanted, Tony Sardell, alias the Duke. Jack Berger, alias Curly. Sometimes known as Flat Nose. Believed headed for New Orleans. $10,000 reward guaranteed. Notify Sheriff Colby County. Now arrest them, and you're doing something. I'll try, Sarge. You can't hold him. He's innocent. Okay, lady. Nobody's disputing your word. They're free to go. Oh, thanks for everything. And if we capture them, we'll get the $10,000 reward. But do you think we can do it? Positive. I'm so sorry. I'm afraid I'll have to interfere with your plans. Yeah, we aim to do a little collecting ourselves. We'll take them below and lock them up and then get the others. All right, you guys. Keep your hands under those blankets. Oh, you, you, I could scratch your eyes out. I've had bigger and better names try it, sister. And I still got my eyes, you see? Now start walking. After you, please. So you were going to collect the reward, my hero. I'm positive I'll get us out of here. Every time you're sure of something, it always goes wrong. First, you were positive you were going to kiss me. Then you were positive you were going to capture Tony and Curly. Well, I hope you're positive of Yvette. What's Yvette got to do with it? I don't understand. Oh, so you're not positive of her either. Well, she told you she liked you, didn't she? Yeah. And you told her she sang divinely, didn't you? Oh, well, I... And then you... And then I what? Well, she didn't finish. Then we heard your trumpet. Heard the trumpet? That's it. You're not going to play that thing now. Why, you... You're just a trumpet player. Yard arm for this. Dramatic any. That guy's still playing the trumpet. Let him blow his head off. We got everybody but the professor. All right, let's get the maestro. And don't you show your face on deck or I'll blow your head off. They can't treat me like this. Sit down. You want him to shoot me? each other's arms. Perfect. Professor, open the door, will you? Come on, hurry up. How'd you lock yourself in? Tony and Curly did it. They probably locked up the others, too. But why? I'll explain later. Ah. Now, look. Here's what we'll have to do. Ah, the maestro. Well, all we need is a piano, and we could have a musical soiree. Well, I'd rather you wouldn't move. Curly has nervous fingers. Ah. Police! Police! Help! They're gonna scalp me. Help! Oh. Oh. oh, oh, my goodness, you should wait your Please, Yvette. Yeah. Don't mind me. Go right ahead. Pick up from, and then. And then what? That's what I'd like to know. And then? Oh! <laughs> and then he got up and walked away, just like that. Nice piece of work, son. Okay, Casey, take care of those mugs. How'd you know they were aboard? We didn't. Not until he told us. Oh, it was nothing. We came aboard to check on a call to New Orleans for dock reservations. New Orleans Navy Yard. Navy Yard? I broke my horn. $10,000 reward will buy a lot of horns, son. Okay, on your way, Tony. Anthony. What difference does it make? It'll soon be a number. Professor, what are you doing dressed like this? Aren't you ashamed of yourself? Oh, dear. This is shocking. Oh, thank you. 
Please forgive me, Jeff. I was jealous. You mean... Susan.